The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Lord. Tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to listen to Jesus, but the Pharisees and scribes began to complain, saying, These men welcome sinners and eat with them. So to them Jesus addressed this parable. A man had two sons, and the younger son said to his father, Father, give me the share of your estate that should come to me. So the father divided the property between them. After a few days, the younger son collected all his belongings and set off to a distant country where he squandered his inheritance on a life of dissipation. When he had freely spent everything, a severe famine struck that country and he found himself in dire need. So he hired himself out to one of the local citizens who sent him to his farm to tend the swine. And he longed to eat his fill of the pods on which the swine fed, but nobody gave him any. Coming to his senses, he thought, how many of my father's hired workers have more than enough food to eat, but here am I, dying from hunger. I shall get up and go to my father, and I shall say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. Treat me as you would treat one of your hired workers. So he got up and went back to his father. While he was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I no longer deserve to be called your son. But his father ordered his servants, Quickly! Bring the finest robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Take the fattened calf and slaughter it. Then let us celebrate with a feast, because this son of mine was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. Then the celebration began. Now the older son had been out in the field and on his way back, as he neared the house, he heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, Your brother has returned, and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf, because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry, and when he refused to enter the house, his father came and out and pleaded with him. He said to his father in reply, Look, all these years I served you, and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returns, who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, for him you slaughtered the fattened calf. He said to him, My son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice, because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. The Gospel of the Lord. Behold, new things have come. 
In the second reading today, St. Paul, writing to the Corinthians once again, appeals to them to a ministry of reconciliation between the old and the new. A ministry of reconciliation. Not to ever see the past as gone and forgotten, or the future as always bright or always scary. But it's all part of one story, the faith in Christ Jesus that turned the people of Corinth to the Lord and that Paul is trying to appeal for a spirit of unity to embrace the path that lies ahead. In a similar way, our parish finds itself in a historic moment in our life as a parish. I've been your pastor for almost six years. It seems like yesterday, the first time that I came to preach here. And I remember uh, what goals we started with and also how to bring the community together. I will sum up my last uh, five and a half years with you as being the Ministry of Reconciliation. What that means is that we need to bring ideas together and then we need to find the common good as a parish in a way to move forward in order to address the future needs of our community. With that in mind, it is my pleasure, I should say, or joy in this Letare Sunday, the Sunday of joy, to announce that we have started a capital campaign to buy land and build a new church. And it's true. And it will happen. We got the land. Just a few blocks away from here, on the going east, about half a mile across the street from Grace Church, but we won't tell them yet. <laughs> there is 15 acres that Bishop, Bishop Weisenberger in his kind and his support for the growth of our parish, the diocese has put our parish as a number one priority in order to address the growth in our area. So that's something that our parish needs to be joyful about because we have a hope and we have a future. The title of the campaign is precisely that, A Hope and a Future, based on a quote from the prophet Jeremiah. When the people of Babylon found themselves in exile, they needed, they needed hope. How are we to raise our children? How are we to build our families, work, etc.? Our community finds itself in a diversity of multicultural, multi-generational reality. From families raising their children to people who have retired and come here to rest. Sort of. <laughs> Very active. So our community finds itself with multi-languages and multicultural realities that we must reconcile together, and we have been reconciling together to bring the unity of the parish in order to bring fruition. That's why I chose the quote from the prophet Jeremiah, because when the people were wondering what's going to happen to us during the Babylonian exile, God sent the word to the prophet Jeremiah precisely to them and said, I have plans for you to prosper you and not to harm you, to give you a hope and a future. God has a plan for our parish. This is not the work of you. This is the work of God. This is how God gets his things done. It is by challenging us to come together and honor the history of our parish. 35 to 40 years ago, a group of parishioners at the time, they were getting together in a classroom on FICO ground. So as workers of the farmers, inviting a priest to come and say mass and teach catechism to the children of the farmers. That's how San Martin was born. From that community, people in the classroom began to gather together to reconcile, to, like St. Paul says in the Ministry of Reconciliation, to gather together and to say, we're going to build something. And when the support of the whole community at the time, they built this multi-purpose building. 
And every time I look at the, at the footprints of this place, I see the shadow of a church that was planned back then to be built next door to us. As is usually churches uh, are built. You have a multi-purpose building and then you have the church. Well, in 35 years, things, the geography has been defined differently at this point because of the current laws and regulations in zoning, we cannot build more in this location. So the hope was to find a spot that we can build our new church, a place designed specifically for worship of our Lord and the celebration of the sacraments and to teach our children with enough space room in classrooms so that we can grow. 15 acres, my brothers and sisters, secures the future of our parish for the next 20, 30, 40 years. In 15 acres, we can build a large church in stages as our community grows. In 15 acres, we can build classrooms. We can build fields for kids to grow and play. And hopefully one day we can build a school attached to the, to the, to the parish. It's enough land for us to grow healthy in a community that is already growing healthy. Just look around. Somebody sent me this weekend a plan for the Sonora Corridor. Probably our mayor, Tom Murphy, knows more about it than I do. But things are going to grow in this area. As a community, as a church, we need to plan. For the past uh, few years, we have worked in various ways to bring the community together. Now, uh, it is our opportunity to work, to get this done. The goal of the campaign at this point is $3 million. It's a lot of money, right? It may take a little more to build a church, I'll be honest with you. But we're not that far. So at this point, I'm going to invite Rene and Aaron Ains. Ains, where are you? All oh, right here. You can come up. Rene and Aaron, her husband, are the chairs of the campaign committee. So I want to thank you on behalf of the parish for the hard work that you have done for the past six months almost since we get, got this started. Thank you very much. Thank you, Father. You'll have to imagine Aaron standing here, my bearded husband. He's, he's working today, so. Um, Aaron and I have two children, Elena, who's sitting here in the front row, she's 10, and Joseph, who's back here serving today, he's eight. We've been members of San Martin's since we moved here about three years ago from Nebraska. And it has been such a privilege to be a part of this parish. All of you have been so welcoming and an incredible blessing in our lives. When we came here, we had no idea of the beauty which awaited us in this community, in this parish family. We are called to be in communion with one another as the body of Christ, and we truly need each other. As Catholic parents, we need a strong community which allows our children to see faith in action. It is important that our children have an opportunity to build strong Catholic friendships and that we as adults are able to support one another in our individual faith journeys. It's critical that this parish community reign, remains strong and visible for our current generation and the generations to come. And that's why our family is committed to this campaign. Many of your fellow parishioners, as Father mentioned, have been working hard for the past five months or so during the quiet phase to get a solid jump start toward our $3 million goal. Due to all of their hard work and generous donors, we have reached $1,259,000 in pledges from 110 gifts. And now we are turning to all of you and asking you to join us 
We are asking that parishioners consider a multi-year sacrificial gift to enable us to reach our goal. By sacrificial, we mean giving something up, like making your own coffee instead of picking Starbucks up every morning, <laughs> or giving up cable television and putting that toward, your, um, toward the goal of the campaign. For us, we were in need of a uh, new car, but instead of buying uh, a new car that we wanted, we found an older used car that'll get us through the next few years and put that money toward the campaign. Everyone's sacrifice looks different. This is an opportunity for you to be part of a unique and exciting adventure that will glorify our Lord. And I know together with our sacrifices, we can reach our goal of $3 million to continue to build Christ's church and leave a legacy for generations to come. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. As you would imagine, I'm extremely proud of the work that our volunteers have done, especially the, the members of the executive committee and the advanced space leadership. If you are in the working of that committee and you're here, if you'd like to please stand so, I can so we can be recognized. All members of the executive committee. The executive committee was compromised of about 20 parishioners from our parish. And imagine if we've done 42% of our goal with 20 parishioners. What we can do if you join us and we become part of, the, of this and volunteer, help us so we can reach the message uh, farther and further. I want to take a moment to recognize, for well, those who like to be recognized, the, the names of the people who have pledged the 110 families is located in the bulletin. So make sure you take a bulletin with you. But if you're present here and you already pledged, please stand just to be recognized. Including myself, by the way. As you can see, thanks to these generous people, we're able to reach that goal. But there are still a lot of people remaining seated. So we'll get to you. <laughs> we'll get there. But it's a process. So I invite you to enter the process. What do we need to do? First of all, we have a video in the background of the church. Take a look at it. It's a two-minute video. It's actually looping right now, but it's also on our Facebook page. I'm going to ask you to like and share the video. That's the first thing you're going to do when you get home, because you're going to, you want to text people in the middle of the church. As soon as you leave church, actually in the parking lot, <laughs> just like and share that video everywhere. Pass it around. Also, the video is on YouTube, so also go and share with all your friends on Instagram or whatever, Twitter, whatever it is you're going to share. We need to let the word out, so as much as we can. As you depart Mass today, in all doors, there's tables with information, there's brochures, frequently asked questions. Uh, be, get educated, get acquainted with the process of the campaign as, as we move forward. You will receive a letter in the mail in the next week. Yeah, unless we don't have your address, but if we don't have your address, then please give it to us. You receive a letter in the mail with information about your participation in the campaign. You'll be hearing also from campaign volunteers who will be calling you. Answer the phone. <laughs> it may be an unknown number, but I can assure you, it's not a telemarketer. They're calling on my behalf, so please answer as you would answer me. Answer me. Though some of you may not answer me. <laughs> so uh, answer the call and then be involved as in the following weeks. More information will be given out. Uh, also, if you like to, please sign up to help us. On your way out, there are some index cards and just put your name and contact information, phone number and email. That's it. And then we can recruit you to help us, to be part of the team that's working to put this together. So uh, please do that and then it will be a great time, a great moment for all of us to get involved. Get to know more about it. Our website has been uh, 
a rent up just this morning. So go to San Martin and see the information on the campaign is right there. You want to see the thermometer is there, how we are advancing and how we're moving forward, it's all there. So please uh, keep on going. As to the location of the land, as I said, the bishop has not signed the dotted line. We're waiting for that to happen in the next few weeks. So uh, I'll keep you posted as soon as it does, because I told the bishop as soon as he signs that dotted line, the diocese is lending us the money, interest free. But the moment that he signs that, we're going to go say mass out there. And we're going to start saying mass and praying there, that one day the Lord may give us a roof as well. So I encourage you to please uh, keep us in your prayers. In the, in, the, in the pews in front of you, there's some prayer cards. We're going to pray after communion at every Mass from now until our least we reach our goal. And I want you to take the prayer cards home. They're in English and Spanish. Pray at home. Take it, put it in your nightstand. We make it large so you don't have to put your glasses on. <laughs> and this is the other small one. But pray. And pray with us every night. Take it with you. And this is going to be the work of the Lord. If He does it, then we're all going to be part of it. So I invite you to put ourselves under the patronage and the care of the Blessed Virgin Mary. Building a church is a beautiful thing. And we ask the Lord through the marriage intercession that she may make us part of this beautiful project. So join me and say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.